In this video, we're going to be creating some CSS buttons and we're going to be uh, creating a base style so you can style up either an anchor. So this first button here is an anchor or just a normal link. And this one is a submit button for a form. So an input with a type of submit. What we're then going to be doing is adding additional classes that allow us to control things like the color. So this is a success submit button. So you can change the color to green or you can have some kind of error submit button uh, that's red, maybe anything like that. And then finally, we're going to be adding some different size uh, classes as well. So these four just here are standard size. They're just the default size. Then we have a medium here and then we have a large. So these aren't going to be perfect. You can go ahead and just play around with them and just basically tidy them up and create your own styles within these. But uh, this should give you a pretty good base to having a full button set on your website. So we're going to jump straight into the code, start writing the markup and then styling these up and then finally adding these hooks on to allow us to control the color and the size. So we're starting out with just a basic document. I have a style sheet just linked in here called app.css, currently nothing in it. I'm going to start to write out the markup for, first of all, the link and then the input. So let's go ahead and create an anchor. This is going to have a href of hash because we're not adding any uh, link in here. I'm going to give this a class of button and inside of here we'll enter submit as the text. So that's what a standard anchor looks like, pretty ugly. And then we're going to have an input with a type of submit, so an input element and we'll enter the value there as submit. So again, when we refresh, we just see a standard submit button. Nothing like each other and again, pretty ugly. So this will also work with button elements. So if you are using them within your forms, that's absolutely fine as well. Let's just add the class of button to this as well. And we'll go ahead and start to write out the base styles. But before we do that, we want to just uh, change the font on our page, just so we have something uh, a little bit nicer to work with. And this is going to vary for you. So the font on your page will be slightly different. Obviously, you can just fiddle around with this and just update these buttons once you have created them just to work with the current styles you already have. So we're going to have a font of 1M. So that's our base font style. And I'm going to choose Helvetica as the font. And we'll do a sans serif fallback. So already we'll see an improvement. We have a nice new font. And we're going to create the base style for the button now. So we're going to have a uh, button class, which is essentially going to control things like the border, the font size, uh, the padding, the text decoration. So removing the underline on the link and just generally things like that, just to tidy them up and make them look uh, the same as each other, both through anchors and inputs. So we'll start with a base background color. We'll just see how this affects the elements as we go along. And I'm going to choose E0, E0, E0 for this. So it's just a gray color. So let's refresh. And you can see this has already started to affect these elements, but they still look a bit odd. So let's go ahead and tidy this up a little bit further. So the next thing I'm going to do is set the border to zero. And we'll see that this gets rid of the border on the input, which is brilliant. So the next thing, I'm just going to change the default color to 333, so like a dark gray color. So they both uh, match now. And I'm going to also set the font size to 1M. That's the base font size for our buttons. So you can see that's actually changed how the button sits. Let's just comment this out quickly. We'll take a look at how that changed again. You can see that changes because uh, the default input is... Uh, isn't inheriting from the body. So we have to define this explicitly. Okay, so next is the padding. We're going to give the area around both the anchor and the input a little bit of space. So we're going to use uh, eight pixels for the top and the bottom and 12 pixels for the left and the right. And we'll see that that makes them look a little bit nicer. So uh, we want to get rid of this underline on the submit and then we'll fix the fact that these don't quite line up. You can see that this one is slightly uh, bigger and this uh, is obviously a little bit further down. So it looks a bit odd. So let's get rid of that text decoration. That's pretty straightforward. It's just text decoration none. That will just get rid of the underline on the on there. So again, they look pretty similar now. And we want to set vertical align 
to middle. Now that might seem a little bit of a strange property to do this, but if you watch very carefully, you'll see these now line up. So looking a little bit nicer. Okay, so the next thing to do then is changing the cursor to a pointer. I'm not gonna save this out, we'll just check out what happens now. So on an input, we can still click this, but we're not actually seeing a pointer like we'd see on an anchor. So it's a little bit confusing. You obviously don't have to add this, but let's save this out, refresh, and now we see a pointer on both of them. So it's just adding a little bit more consistency. So now I want to give these a border radius that will just round out the borders of this or the corners of this for us. So you can see that they're a little bit rounder now. Uh, and obviously from here, you can just go ahead and update these just to uh, work exactly as you want as your base styles. Now what we're now gonna focus on is changing the color of the button. So I'm gonna copy these. I'm going to paste them just down here. And I'm gonna add another class on called success. So this can be called anything you want, just whatever makes sense to you. But we can tie this in in our style sheet by saying button and then attaching this selector on here. So we have a button success selector. All this means is that a class of button that also has the class of success. Now all we need to do, because we have our base styles, we don't need to duplicate anything because this will inherit the styles from here. So all we can do now is change the background, we can change the color, we can do anything else we want, but we're gonna keep this really simple. So we're gonna change the background color to a nice green. So this is 88C425. And we can see here that they then change. And why don't we go and update the foreground color as well, just to make that pop a little bit better, like that. So we've now got these uh, sort of hooks, if you like, to change the color. And of course, what you can do is duplicate these down. You could have button error and you could change this to a red color and do whatever you want here. So you can control that, it's entirely flexible now. So now that we've got our uh, success buttons and our sort of standard buttons, we're gonna go ahead and focus on sizing. So again, this is pretty straightforward. All we need to do is add hooks in. So I'm gonna copy these again, just to demonstrate them side by side. I'm gonna say we want this to be a medium button or both of these to be a medium button. So obviously at the moment they look exactly the same, but we can go ahead and add another hook as we did with the success. So we can say button, medium, and now we can start to change the font size and the padding, anything else we want to do. So here I'm just gonna say I want the font size to be 1.1M and I want the padding to be two pixels larger on the top, bottom, left and right. So remember the base padding on the top and bottom is eight, eight pixels, so we're gonna say 10. And on the left and the right is 12 pixels, so we're gonna say 14 pixels. So now that will have increased the size of them just enough to make a little bit of a difference. And why don't we go and just duplicate this again. Pull this down here. Let's get rid of the success this time actually, just so we can see uh, using these in different ways. So we're gonna say button large. So this is just gonna be our standard color but we're gonna make it a large button. So we're gonna say button.large. And again, we're just gonna update the font size. So we're gonna say font size 1.2 Ms. And we're gonna set the padding again to two pixels larger than the medium. So it's 12 pixels on the top and bottom and 16 pixels on the left and the right. And there we have our larger buttons next to each other. So this is, like I said, far from perfect. You can go ahead and play around with these styles. This is a great way to start if you want some kind of consistent button theme. Uh, and just by adding these hooks on, it makes it a lot easier when you're developing. You, you know exactly what the class names are and you can just go ahead and use these across your project. So that's it, we've built some CSS buttons, including hooks for colors, sizes, and you can go ahead and add to this as you want.